Welcome to home brewing, hobby, obsession, way of life. This video will show you how to brew your own beer at home with Northern Brewers Deluxe Starter Kit. Brewing beer might seem like a mysterious process, but it's really not. Brewing is boiling liquid, moving liquid from vessel to vessel without splashing it, keeping equipment clean, and waiting for yeast to work its magic. If you can make mac and cheese from a box without help, you can make beer, and we're going to show you how. In this video, you will see the three stages of making beer with your Northern Brewer starter kit. First, the actual brewing, where malt extract and hops are boiled with water to make wort. Next, fermenting, which is when the wort we brewed is turned into beer by the yeast. Finally, bottling, where the flat beer is bottled with a little dose of sugar for priming, the brewer's term for carbonating the bottles. And that's really all there is to it. Boiling liquid, moving liquid, keeping things clean, and waiting for the yeast to do its thing. Before we get started, let's go over the four things you will need. One, a starter kit. Two, a recipe kit. The ingredients, malt extract, hops, and yeast in the right proportions for the kind of beer you want to make. Three, a boil kettle that can hold at least three and a half gallons of liquid. We are going to use a five gallon kettle in this video. Four, bottles for your finished beer. You will need approximately two cases of clean, pry off beer bottles. Brown glass is best. Brewing day is here. The boil kettle is ready and we are going to brew the caribou slobber brown ale. On brewing day, we will boil the malt extract and hops in water to make the wort, then cool the wort. Now it's time to brew. With the yeast ready, it's time to collect water in the boil kettle and start heating it on the stove. Any good quality drinking water, tap or otherwise, is fine. If the water tastes good, it will make good beer. If your recipe kit includes specialty grains, it also includes a muslin bag for steeping. Put the muslin bag over the open sack of grains, tip the sack and slowly pour the grains into the muslin bag. Tie a knot near the top of the muslin bag so the grains don't spill while steeping. If you like, you can toss the bag for a few moments to knock out excess grain dust from the crushed malt. As the water heats, steep specialty grain. Specialty grains give extra color and flavor to the finished beer. Steep the grain for 20 minutes or until the water reaches approximately 170 Fahrenheit, whichever comes first. Not every Northern Brewer recipe kit comes with specialty grain. If your recipe kit doesn't call for specialty grain, you can skip ahead to adding malt extract. Speaking of liquid malt extract, here's a tip. A few minutes before you knead it, put the unopened jug of syrup in a sink or tub of warm water. This will make it easier to pour when it's time to add to the kettle. When you've reached temperature or time, just lift the specialty grains out and let them drain briefly. Don't squeeze the bag. Bring the kettle to a boil and add the malt extract stirring to dissolve it. Your recipe kit may include malt extract syrup or dry malt extract. The caribou slobber has both. Some tips for dissolving malt extract. Turn the heat off to prevent scorching. Pour syrup in slowly. Pour dry malt extract quickly and stir constantly. When the extract is dissolved, return the kettle to the heat and bring it to a boil. When it starts to boil, set a timer for 60 minutes. We now have wort. The wort will be boiled for 60 minutes, during which we add the hops at the time specified by the recipe. Your recipe kit's instructions show the time for each hop addition. For our brew, the Caribou Slobber Recipe Kit has three additions. One that says 60 minutes, another that says 45 minutes, and a third that says 15 minutes. This is the amount of time each hop addition needs to be boiled. The first addition goes into the kettle right away and is boiled for the entire 60 minutes. The second addition is added 45 minutes before the end of the boil. And the last addition is added 15 minutes before the end of the boil. Your recipe kit may call for other boil additions like spices, sugars, or more malt extract. Treat these just like hops and add them to the kettle at their specified time. And now a word from Northern Brewers Civilian Brewing Division. When you boil wort, it creates froth. 
When you add boil additions like hops, spices, or sugars, it creates a lot of froth. Because wort is sugary, boil overs are sticky. The watched pot may never boil, but the unwatched pot will always boil over. If the froth tries to escape your kettle and boil over, two things to remember. Turn the heat down and stir, stir, stir. I'm boiling some wort outside to show you what a boil over looks like. Don't try this at home. I am a professional. Just look at that huge, nasty mess. Do yourself a favor. Don't let this happen to your stovetop. Stay diligent, home brewer. Keep an eye on boiling wort and be ready to knock down escaping froth. Now, back to the brew day. The 60 minute boil is finished and all boil kettle additions have been made. The wort must now be cooled to 100 degrees Fahrenheit or below before we can add yeast and proceed with stage two, fermenting. We are going to use a simple cold water bath to cool the wort. Replace water as necessary. If you like, you could add ice to the water bath. Keep the kettle covered almost all the way to protect wort from airborne microbes. When the side of the kettle is about body temperature, lukewarm, not hot to the touch, it's time to get ready for fermentation. While the wort is cooling, it's time to do the most important task of the entire brewing process, sanitizing. It's impossible to make good beer with dirty equipment, so everything that comes in contact with the wort or beer from now on must be sanitized. First, assemble the bottling bucket and auto siphon. The gasket and spigot go on the outside of the bucket. The nut goes on the inside. Hand tighten. Don't over tighten or it'll deform the gasket and cause a leak. Leak test the bucket with plain water before proceeding. Use the Star Sand Sanitizer included with your starter kit to sanitize the equipment. To make the sanitizing solution, use one fluid ounce of Star Sand per five gallons of water. Use the gradient lines on the bucket to measure the water. Use the auto siphon to stir the mixture. This solution will sanitize the bucket. Also put the funnel, airlock, bung, and yeast packet in the sanitizer. Two minutes contact time to sanitize the surfaces, no rinsing required. While you've got the sanitizer solution in the graduated bucket, put five gallons in the carboy and mark the carboy. We used electrical tape. Fill the carboy up the rest of the way with sanitizer. For further information on sanitizing and cleaning, see chapters three and five of this DVD. When the wort in the kettle is cooled and the fermentation equipment is sanitized, it's time to fill the fermenter. First, add two gallons of cold water to the sanitized empty fermenter. Next, pour in the cooled wort. Leave behind any thick sludge that's accumulated in the bottom of the kettle. Finally, add more cold water to bring the total volume to five gallons. Seal the fermenter and gently rock back and forth for a few minutes to mix the wort and the water, and to aerate the wort for fermentation. The side of the fermenter should not be warm to the touch. Now it's time to add the yeast. The brewing term is pitching the yeast. If you have dry yeast, sprinkle it on the surface of the wort. Seal the fermenter, fill the airlock with sanitizer, and move the fermenter to a dark, quiet spot. Now it's time to take a break. Let the yeast do the heavy lifting. Have a beer, then clean up. Within a day or two of brewing day, fermentation begins. While the yeast convert malt sugars into carbon dioxide and alcohol, you will see bubbles come through the airlock, and a cap of thick tan foam forms above the beer. Roughly one to two weeks from brewing day, fermentation ends. Bubbles coming through the airlock become very slow or stop entirely, and the cap of foam starts to subside. Attention citizens, do you know where your yeast is? By now you've noticed that actively fermenting beer has a head of yeasty foam on it. This yeasty foam is called the croisin. 
Croizen is good. It's a sign of a healthy fermentation. When the Croizen tries to escape the carboy through the neck, that's called blow-off. Blow-off is bad. It's bad because it's messy at a time when we want things to be sanitary and contained. It's also bad because it can clog the airlock and pressurize the carboy. What should you do if your beer tries to escape during fermentation? Use a blow-off hose or a blow-off hose and stopper if you opted for plastic carboys. How to do this? Sanitize the blow-off hose. Remove the airlock and stopper. Put the blow-off hose into the carboy. Run the free end into a bucket or container of sanitizer. This will act like a giant airlock. It'll still let the CO2 gas escape without letting oxygen back in, and it's big enough for the escaping croisin to travel up through the hose into the sanitizer, keeping everything contained and sanitary. Ferment on, fermentors. After primary fermentation is complete, the fermented beer is transferred to a five gallon carboy for secondary fermentation. Do -do 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 Stand by for another important message from the Civilian Brewing Division. We are fermenting beer with the Northern Brewer Deluxe Starter Kit, which uses a two-stage fermentation. The first stage, primary fermentation, in a six-gallon carboy, active fermentation. The yeast is actively metabolizing the sugar in the wort, converting it into CO2 and alcohol. Secondary fermentation takes place in the five-gallon carboy. This is a quiet period in between active fermentation and bottling, where the beer's flavor will mellow out. It has a chance to clarify after primary fermentation and let all of the yeast, remaining hop and malt solids settle out to the bottom so you get a clearer, smoother tasting beer when it's time to move to bottles. How do you do a secondary fermentation? It's very simple. Sanitize the five gallon carboy, siphon the finished beer from the primary into the secondary. The caribou slobber calls for a one to two week primary fermentation followed by two to four weeks secondary fermentation before you bottle. Don't be terrified to let your beer get clarified. Brew on brewers. Time once again to sanitize. The auto siphon and hose, five gallon carboy, bung, and airlock. We will mix the sanitizing solution in the bottling bucket. Siphon the beer from the primary fermenter into the secondary fermenter and attach the airlock. Do -do 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 -do. Your beer is at risk. Stay tuned for this important information from the Civilian Brewing Division. Question. What is the difference between a smart siphon and a not-so-smart siphon? Three things. Gravity, oxygen, sludge. Gravity. Smart siphons use gravity. Gravity is your friend. Put the receiving vessel lower than the vessel you're siphoning out of. Two, oxygen. Oxygen is your enemy. Smart siphons do not splash the beer. Splashing the beer causes oxygen uptake. Siphon quietly. Three, sludge. Sludge is bad. Sludge accumulates at the bottom of your primary fermenter. Sludge is normal, sludge is natural. Sludge is yeast and malt and hop solids, but when we siphon, we want to leave the sludge behind. How do you leave the sludge behind? Two principles. Start high. Start your siphon high up in the carboy. Don't jam it all the way down right into that sludge. Start it high and follow the liquid level down. Two, finish tilted. Tilt the carboy so you can follow the level of liquid down all the way to the bottom and get every last drop of good beer out of your fermenter without picking up the sludge. Common sense clause, home brewers. Tilt the carboy back over a table, not out over empty space. That is a recipe for spilled beer and hurt feet. Remember, start high, finish tilted. Siphon on, brewers. <laughs> Thanks to the efforts of our yeast, the wort has been transformed into warm, flat beer. We're almost there. We just need to carefully transfer it into bottles to let it become carbonated, handcrafted homebrew. First, 
assemble the bottling bucket and auto siphon. The gasket and spigot go on the outside of the bucket. The nut goes on the inside. Hand tighten. Don't over tighten or it'll deform the gasket and cause a leak. Leak test the bucket with plain water before proceeding. Time once again to sanitize. Prepare a star sand solution and sanitize the bottling bucket with spigot, the bottle filler with three foot hose, and the auto siphon assembly. Approximately 60 bottle caps. Always have spares sanitized and ready when you're bottling. Also sanitize two cases of pry off beer bottles. Remember, two minutes contact time, drain the bottles in the bucket, no rinsing required. Mix a priming solution. We will use 5 eighths of a cup of plain white table sugar in 16 ounces of water. The measured dose of sugar will cause a small controlled fermentation in the bottles. The CO2 given off by this fermentation will carbonate the beer. Bring the priming solution to a boil, let it cool for 5 minutes, then pour it into the empty, sanitized bottling bucket. Make sure the spigot is closed. Siphon the beer from the fermenter into the bottling bucket. Is the spigot still closed? When the bucket is filled, stir gently with the auto siphon to mix the beer and priming solution. Attach one end of the three-foot bottling hose to the clear end of the bottle filler. Attach the other end of the hose to the spigot on the bottling bucket. Open the spigot. Fill the bottles by depressing the filler against the bottom of the bottle. The valve will open and the beer will flow. Lift up on the filler to close the valve and stop the beer. Leave approximately one inch of headspace in each bottle. Put a sanitized bottle cap on a filled bottle. Center the bell of your bottle capper on the cap and push down on the levers, then release. The cap should be crimped tightly. After the bottles are filled and capped, the beer needs to condition. Move the bottles to a quiet, dark spot where they will be at room temperature. After one to two weeks, the bottles can be stored cool or cold. Like many craft beers, your homebrew is bottle conditioned. There will be a layer of fine yeast at the bottom of each bottle. This is unfiltered, natural, living beer. Pour your beer into a clean glass, leaving the layer of yeast behind. Cheers.